Hey there everyone, it's Zach and Gus. We're back from GreatDaneCare.com. Today, per your request and all the comments and suggestions that we got in our last video, we're here to do a video by your request, and that is an in-depth tutorial on how to clean a Great Dane's ears. Now, I will say that it was not a landslide victory by any means. Uh, it came out to about 65% for the ear cleaning versus 35% for the how to get a shiny coat. Uh, so we will keep the other video in our queue as well. Uh, but if you do have other requests for videos you'd like to see or other questions you might have, please keep adding them in the comments because on the last video we did get a lot of great other suggestions as well. Um, but we always want to make sure that we're making content for things that you actually want versus things that I think you want. So I really do appreciate all the engagement you provide in the comments there as well. Now the other thing I noticed on a less positive note is that from the last video that only about 85% of the thousands of daily views that are happening on our videos per day are coming from subscribed users to the channel. Uh, so please, if you have a chance, do make sure to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It really does help us out to make sure that all Great Dane owners have a chance to see these videos and help themselves and of course help their Great Danes out as well. So with that, let's jump in and talk about ear cleaning for Great Danes. Uh, compared to other types of grooming for things like giving them a bath or trimming their toenails, I think ear cleaning is something that can really fall under the radar and that many people will often forget about. Um, however, that's something you really, make, really want to make sure that you stay on top of. Obviously, our Great Danes have very large ears that are very prone to collecting dirt and dust and all, their, all other types of gunk and grime that can really build up in there. And based on the kind of anatomy of the ear canal in a dog, um, a lot of this gunk can really get lodged down in there and create different types of ear infections. Uh, so the best approach to making sure that the Great Dane doesn't get an ear infection is just to clean them on a very regular basis. Now that of course begs the question of exactly how often should we clean our Great Dane's ears. The short and easy answer is basically if you can look inside your Great Dane's ears and you can see gunk or kind of grime that is accumulated, that's a very clear indicator that that's something you need to have cleaned out instead of letting it continue to build up and potentially lead to ear infections. Now, how often you need to clean them will vary a little bit based on you know, the climate you live in, how much time your dog spends outside, are they just kind of a dirty dog that likes to always be rubbing themselves in the dirt and the grass, or are they kind of a more clean, pristine dog who just likes to lounge on the couch as Gus is uh, doing so well at the moment right now. Um, for her though, we end up doing this about every week, maybe two weeks if we really let it go, uh, but her ears in particular just seem to really collect a lot of gunk, uh, so we try to kind of time it where we spend a few minutes uh, after we trim her paws up to just go ahead and clean her ears out as well just because it is such a simple and straightforward process. Now the other sign that you may also notice when your Great Dane needs to get their ears cleaned is you may actually hear them kind of shaking their heads and if they have uncropped ears like Gus does, uh, it makes this really kind of loud slapping sound as the ears kind of smack each side of their face. Um, what she's doing in this scenario is she's literally got an itch inside of her ear and by kind of shaking her head back and forth that literally kind of scratches it a little bit for her. Um, you may also notice that they're kind of laying on their bed or laying on the ground and they're really kind of intently pawing at the ear kind of scratching inside of it. Um, this would not just be a casual, you know, one off come in here and just kind of scratch the ear but really kind of digging in there. Um, that's another really good sign that it's just time to clean your ears out as well. Now the other good news when it comes to ear cleaning is that it needs very few supplies. It's something you can buy two things literally and you'll have everything you absolutely need to keep their ears clean. I think another mistake that many owners make with ear cleaning is that they try to exclusively use different types of ear cleaning wipes as a way just to kind of wipe around what they can reach inside of the ear. The issue with this is that much of the ear canal is in an area that even with their very large ears that you simply cannot reach into or at least not safely. Um, so that kind of really deep cleaning with something like a wipe or even a Q-tip, that should be completely left to veterinarians. There's a different approach that is also equally effective uh, that can get deep down in there without the risk of uh, hitting their eardrum or potentially rupturing it or puncturing it. And that involves the use of different <coughs> uh, cleaning solutions that are precisely made for safely cleaning out their ear to flush it, get deep down in there and all the different crevices and really kind of get all that gunk out of there. Um, and I'll show this here in a few minutes, kind of what this process looks like, but using a combination of this solution to flush all of those, those deep dirt and gunk and grime out of the ear. Um, and then from there, if you want to, you can use these different types of medicated wipes to kind of wipe out the gunk. Um, or also just from a cheaper standpoint, good old fashioned cotton balls here, you can use these just to kind of also wipe out the gunk. Uh, the nice thing about cotton balls, in addition to being cheaper, is that they also help kind of dry out the ear. 
Um, when you use the cleaning solution, you will actually fill up the eardrum and then kind of pump it to help kind of drag out all the debris. And that will spread kind of the solution everywhere, especially once the dog shakes their head. Uh, so the cotton balls are a good way to help dry them off as well. Now for all the things that I just kind of showed you here, I will place links in the description so that way you don't have to hunt around or look for certain ones that work. Uh, they'll be directly in the description below the video. And with that, let's go ahead and we'll jump in to show you exactly how we clean a Great Dane's ears. I will be upfront telling you that while Gus is an absolute champ when it comes to all of their types of grooming, when it comes to ear cleaning and kind of filling up that ear with the solution, she does not like it. Uh, so you will see a case of a dog that's really not the biggest fan of it. Um, so we often use things like treats or other positive rewards as a way to kind of, you know, uh, make her a little bit more comfortable with the process. And frankly, I don't blame her. Uh, if you think about, you know, getting water in your own ear if you're swimming or in the shower, and you just probably immediately want to get it out, that's exactly what it feels like for them while you're filling up the, the ear canal and kind of pumping all the solution out. Um, so I get the discomfort, but uh, ultimately it's better for them to avoid ear infections and have issues come up than just a very temporary kind of minor discomfort of having the ear filled. All right, so for the step-by-step -step cleaning portion of this tutorial, we've gone ahead and moved into our laundry room so that way we don't make a big mess outside. Uh, today it's in the 20s and snowing in Colorado, so uh, we certainly don't want to go out there and freeze our butts off in the process, so we'll just do it inside. Now the first thing I'll show you is just a quick way to kind of visually inspect to see um, you know, what the gunk looks like when it has accumulated. Uh, for Gus, it hasn't been too long. I think it's only been maybe seven or 10 days since her last cleaning. So uh, it's about on par with how often we normally clean her ears. Uh, so you will see a little bit of gunk, but there won't be a ton. Um, if you've really let your dog go for several weeks or a couple months even, uh, there's gonna be so much gunk in there, it's gonna be crazy. Uh, but I'll go ahead and we'll zoom in and show you what it looks like for Gus right now. Okay, so we've got her ear pulled back and we can see that in the outer portion of the ear, there's not too much dirt and gunk. However, as we look deeper inside the ear, there's definitely a good bit in there that we'll want to use the solution to help flush this out and then finally clean it out with the cotton balls as well. All right, so that should give you some idea as to what it looks like when their ear is a little bit dirty. Now keep in mind that this is only some of the gunk that you can see because this is only the things in the upper part of the canal. If you can see things at the top portion, I can guarantee there's a lot more below it as well that you're not able to see. Uh, so now that we've determined that it is time for an ear cleaning and Gus is ready for it, uh, at least medically speaking, uh, the next step is to go ahead and clean her ear. Uh, before you start the process, of course, go ahead and gather your supplies of the cleaning solution, either cotton balls or wipes, and if you're indoors, preferentially some kind of towel to help kind of contain the mess here. Uh, Gus isn't a huge fan of this first step here, which is actually filling the air with the cleaning solution. Uh, so if I'm alone kind of doing this solo, what I'll often do is, let's say for example, if we want to start with the right ear, I'll kind of come to her right side and kind of give her a nice hug. And then I'll use my free hand to actually kind of hold her face here. So that way after I fill this ear, uh, she's not having the ability to kind of tip her head and dump out all that solution uh, that's inside of it. All right, so for the next step, once you've got yourself in position, the next thing you're going to do is kind of flare out the ear by using that offhand to kind of lift it up and pull it away. And then we're going to actually take our cleaning solution and fill up the ear. Now, so by fill up the ear, I don't mean add five or 10 drops. I mean literally fill it until the point where you see the fluid line as it has kind of filled up the canal below it. Um, once again, this is the part where your dog will be a little bit uncomfortable having this much uh, fluid in the ear, so they may try to tip their head to dump it out. They may, may even try to shake their head, um, which is why it's kind of helpful if you're alone kind of doing the solo to kind of hug them with that one hand and use the off hand to kind of keep them from tipping their jaw down there. Um, you can see Gus is already getting a little bit nervous because she really doesn't like your cleanings, but it's good for you. You need to have this done, Gus. Um, so with that, we'll go ahead and go start the process for filling up Gus's ear, and then we'll kind of show you what this looks like to kind of pump out all of it out. All right, so we've gone ahead and moved a little bit so you can see this happening better. Um, one thing that I've also gone and proactively done is hung a towel around Gus's back. Um, that way, after we've gone ahead and filled the ear and massaged it in for a while, she's gonna wanna shake her head because that can make a mess. It's easy for me to kind of pull the towel up over her head to help kind of catch some of that solution. Um, now, as far as filling the ear, I'll once again assume my position of the, the hug here so I can kind of support her face and keep it flat and level, and then proceed to fill the ear up here until I can see the fluid line inside of it. 
Um, that way, knowing that we've got it completely filled up and we have enough solution in there to kind of make it uh, do its job. Uh, so at this point, we'll want to go ahead and massage the base of the ear, and you'll do so in a circular motion um, so that you can really uh, pump out all the gunk and dirt and debris that's inside of it. Now when you're doing this correctly, you'll hear a suctioning sound, and I'll stop for a minute so you can hear this. And that's what lets you know that you've got that vacuum inside the ear that's going to help to pull out all the gunk. And you'll want to do this for about 30 seconds to a minute. Um, as you can see, Gus is not a huge fan of this, um, so just know that they may try to tip their head to get it out, but it is better for them in the long run. Now once you've hit this appropriate time, you can go ahead and cover their head with the towel and then allow them to kind of shake their heads and let the towel kind of catch the worst of it. Um, so that way you're not making a huge mess of the inside of your house there. Good girl, Gus. All right, so once they've shaken their heads, they may want to do this two or three times just to really kind of get all that uh, fluid out of the ear, uh, much like you would after a shower getting water in, the ear. in your head. You might kind of tip your head a few times to get all the water out. Now, once that's been completed, you'll take either your ear wipes or your cotton balls and actually just use them to uh, wipe out all of the remaining gunk. And this will just be in the outer portion of the ear that you can easily reach. Uh, so you're not going to be digging way down in the ear here. Now, uh, because the solution was in there and you were kind of pumping it with your finger during the massage, that will have suctioned out a lot of the solution. And then also when they shake their heads, because all the gunk's been loosened, that helps to literally fling it out of the ear. Um, so the majority of this you can reach just all in the outer portion of the ear uh, without having to do anything crazy here to wipe it all out. All right, so to wipe Gus's ear here, I'm just gonna grab a couple cotton balls and we're just going to kind of wipe out everything that we can easily reach um, without digging, once again, too deep inside of her ear. Um, just kind of rotating the cotton balls so that way you're always kind of using a clean edge of it. Until it gets dirty, then you can just grab a few other ones. The beauty of these cotton balls is they are so cheap. Um, they come in huge packs. Um, that there's really no reason to try to be frugal with them um, to kind of get the ear cleaned out. Um, so I'll use a few of these to kind of get the ear cleaned out with all that gunk. And then I'll also use them to try to help dry off her ear as much as it can. And then of course we've got our towel here so I can use this to uh, wipe up any of the remaining solution. All right, so if you're doing this cleaning on a regular basis, so in other words, you're not letting the ears get too dirty, um, just doing one quick cycle there, cleaning out the ear on the left side and the right side may be sufficient. Um, if you've really let it go too long, you may need to do this twice in a row um, in one day to kind of really get the worst of it out. Um, and then if it's gotten to be a really bad case, you may need to do this kind of once a day for several days in a row just to really get that residual uh, gunk and residue out of the ear as well. Now this of course is showing kind of the, you know, the really deep ear cleaning process. One thing I should point out is that once again, we're not digging really deep inside their ear. You don't want to be poking around the eardrum. Um, I'm only using really soft implements like ear wipes or cotton balls to kind of wipe the gunk out. You don't want to be going in there with Q-tips and other kind of sharp instruments that could end up accidentally damaging their ear. Now at the end of the process, knowing that we want to make sure that we create a positive experience for all these different types of grooming, whether it's ear cleaning or nail trimming, um, it would be a great idea to give your dog a treat afterwards, give them some extra love and attention, especially during the early days, so that way they don't uh, begin to associate this with the negative process. As you can see, once again, Gus is not the biggest fan. Uh, she does, however, tolerate ear cleanings because she knows that it leads to treats afterwards. Um, so while it was a little bit uncomfortable, understandably, um, she's going to be okay and she'll be just fine. All right, so as you just saw, cleaning out a Great Dane's ear is really a very simple and straightforward process. There's only a handful of materials that you need to actually clean the ear, and then the time it actually takes to perform the cleaning is really only a couple of minutes in total. All right, so that wraps up our in-depth tutorial for how to clean a Great Dane's ears. Now, if you like this video, please make sure to go ahead and give us a like. And if you are not subscribed to the channel yet, please give us a subscribe as well as it really helps us out. And until next time, stay dandy, my friends.